Today in the news, we got confirmations for Raptor Lake, AMD speeding up manufacturing, and a weird thingamajig from Sony. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. With Alder Lake, the company truly came out of the woodwork to compete against AMD. I mean, sure, if we look at the uh, top end, it's not super efficient, but in terms of performance, it's nothing to scoff at. Their 12 core 24 thread CPU had a pretty big disadvantage being eight threads under AMD's 5950X, but it still managed to beat it in gaming, albeit by a very small amount. It was a back and forth on the productivity side though. Plus, it was 150 to $200 cheaper for the chip itself. But AMD's Zen 4 is rapidly approaching. So what does Intel have in stores for that? Well, according to all of the leaks and rumors that we've had, it's Raptor Lake. Does it have more cores? Does it have a new architecture? Well, it's a bit of both. And a recent benchmark on the ashes of the Singularity leaderboards confirmed some of it. First, the architecture. While it's not 100% confirmed, Raptor Lake would use an enhanced version of the Golden Cove core used on Alder Lake. It's called Raptor Cove Core internally. From current leaks, it has improvements on pretty much all fronts, in performance per watt, in IPC, and in clock speeds. In terms of power, we heard that it would use DLVR, which could deliver up to 7% more performance with 21% less power. Now, less power for a specific performance level doesn't mean that Intel won't push this thing all the way up. According to current rumors, this thing would still sip a little more than Alder Lake at 253 watts for its PL2. As for the clock speeds, these chips would apparently reach all the way up to 5.5 gigahertz. Damn. And then we have the uh, core count, which has just been confirmed. It was tested with Ashes of the Singularity, and we can see 32 threads here, which means that we're looking at eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. As you can see, the score is not super impressive, but hey, it's an early sample, so I have no doubt it will be a beast. On AMD's side, it looks like the company will stick with a 16 core flagship for Ryzen 7000, which means that Intel might once again take the performance crown here. It all depends on how much IPC AMD is able to squeeze out of their brand new Zen 4 architecture. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Speaking of AMD CPUs, we might see them earlier than expected. So far, everyone pointed to a Q4 of 2022 release. I mean, the company just unveiled the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D not long ago. It's been slated for release in spring of this year, so that's between late March and late June. So Q4 of 2022 for Zen 4 made sense, but we got a trusty leaker singing a different tune. Graymon55 over on Twitter tweeted this, Zen 4 Q4 with a red X. So it looks like Q4 is out as a release window. So that means that Zen 4 should be announced during Q3. That's July, August, and September. Not only that, but he did mention that the manufacturing of production samples for AM5 motherboards are almost ready. Specifically, that it would start this month or so. A whole quarter early is pretty big, but it's understandable. That's because AMD probably doesn't want to give Intel a window of opportunity. If you remember, Raptor Lake is slated, or at least rumored, to be slated for Q3 of this year. That's according to leaker Momomo US over on Twitter. So yeah, Q3 is going to be a wild three months. Then let's get away from CPUs and GPUs and look at some earbuds, some pretty weird ones at that. So Sony has a launch event coming later this month and one of the products just got leaked. It's a pair of Link Buds called the WF900 and they look like this. Yup, it's a weird pair to be sure. Now, personally, I don't hate the concept. I have tiny ears, so uh, I don't know how the fit would work, but I'm personally not a fan of earbuds with the suction thingy. Even if it has transparency modes or anything like that, I always opt for something more open, and this apparently is what this pair does. The rumored pricing is around $250 US, which is pretty hefty when you consider it might be missing noise canceling. 
And lastly, let's do our free game check. Right now on the Epic Store, you can get Windbound. Uh, it's an action adventure game that has a lot of Breath of the Wild vibes, but instead of puzzles, it's mostly about survival. It's a polarizing game with some people loving it and others absolutely hating it, but hey, it's free, so check it out. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Wait.